here I have a Taylor mortise cylinder. Um, what I wanted to show you was, uh, or explain a little bit, I guess, is binding order. Uh, this one's a five pin. It's kind of a junky cylinder, but it gives really good feedback. Um, binding order is the order in which the pins bind while you're picking it. Um, so if I go in here, there's pin one. Pin one has nothing. Go to pin two. Pin two has nothing. Go to pin three. Pin three is binding. So what I'm going to do is push it up until it sets. You heard that and probably saw a little bit. I'm going to keep going. Pin four has nothing on it. Pin five is binding. So I'm going to go ahead and set pin five. And there pin five is set. So now we have three and five. So I'm going to come back to the front. One still has nothing. Pin two is binding. So I want to set pin two. And there's pin two. Go pin three we already set. Pin four is binding now. There's pin four. So now we have pin three, five, two, and four set. So I should be able to just push up on pin number one here and set it and open it. And there it is. <clears throat> so the binding order counterclockwise was three, five, two, four, one. So let's go ahead and do it clockwise and see what happens. <clears throat> okay, clockwise. Pin one, nothing. Two, nothing. Three, nothing. Four is the first one to bind this time. So there's pin four. Go ahead and check pin five. Pin five is not binding. Back to the front. Pin one is binding. So we'll go ahead and set pin one. There's pin one. Pin two is nothing. Three is nothing. Four we already set. Now five is binding. So we'll go ahead and set five. There's five. Back to the front. Pin one's already set. Pin two is binding now. So we'll go ahead and set pin two. There's pin two set. And the only one left is pin three. So I should be able to set pin three here. And there she is opened up that way. So. Um, the binding order, there we go. Counterclockwise was 35241, and then clockwise was 41523. I'm going to pop this one apart real quick. This is an adjustable mortise cylinder. That screw right there you can loosen and tighten to make the cylinder longer or shorter. I gotta take this apart. I don't have a key for it, so I'll pick it again real quick. Same binding order that time. cylinder out here. Okay. You can see those. There we've got the five key pins. And uh, 
if we put a ruler here next to it, you can see that the holes aren't all drilled directly on center. They're off just a little bit to the left or to the right. Um, you can see pin 5 is off quite a bit down there. If I'm holding the ruler perfectly straight, I know I'm probably not, but, but you can see they're off one way or the other. And that's what gives us the binding order, and that's what makes, makes it possible to pick the lock. I guess if these were all 100% dead on center um, there wouldn't be a binding order I guess um, you'd have to lift them all up like with the key all simultaneously to the correct height in order to get the lock to turn so um, They don't have to be off a lot, just enough to uh, make one bind before the next one. So, there it is for you, binding order explained, and uh, hopefully that helps somebody out a little bit as to what the binding order is and what makes it possible to pick just a standard lock, no security pins in it. Um, I even tried going with a super heavy tension on this one and could not get the binding order to change. I also went with super light tension and uh, still the same, the same binding order every time. So that's it. Thank you for watching.